Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, Richard Denning and Barbara Britton star in an amateur detective radio adventure of Mr. and Mrs. North from 1954. Stick around. We'll be right back. You wouldn't know the truth if it followed you, mister. Creator and star Jack Webb is here to bring you just the facts, ma'am, in Dragnet. Web stars is Sergeant Joe Friday in a police detective drama so action-packed it made its way across radio and television and motion pictures. We're bringing you over two dozen episodes of Dragnet right here on The Film Detective. Created by Francis and Richard Lockridge, Mr. and Mrs. North were not professional detectives, but simply a well-to-do New York couple who stumbled across a murder or two every week and felt compelled to solve the crimes. A 1942 MGM movie starred William Post Jr. and George Burns' wife, Gracie Allen. That same year, The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North debuted on radio, and it was soon generating top ratings, with a weekly listenership of 20 million fans. Joseph Curtin and Alice Frost originally voiced the roles of Jerry and Pam North on radio. Later, Richard Denning and Barbara Britton were cast, staying on for its successful transition to TV. In the radio show we're about to hear, two students of a prominent fencing instructor are involved on opposite sides of the murder investigation of a blackmailer. Here's Touch of Death, starring Richard Denning and Barbara Britton in Mr. and Mrs. North. Where's Steve Decker, Tempelo? Right here, Lieutenant. Bill, look. Be careful, Bill. He's got a gun. Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Richard Denning and Barbara Britton. Listen as Pam and Jerry solve the mystery, Touch of Death. On the second floor of a small midtown Manhattan building, the lights burn late again tonight burn as late as they do most every night, and burn as bright as the warped ambition which fires old Pietro Tampolo. The knee, Steve. Bend the knee. Ah, Ah. now. Ah, second. Second, you hear. Second. No, 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 too Ah. slow. And the arm, the arm is bent. Bad, bad. Ah, bad. No, 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 no. Ah. Now, what the devil did you do that for? Your fault. Pick it up. Almost broke my wrist. Pick up your foil, Steve. Forget it, Meister. I'm quitting for the night. Quit, 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 quit. Look, it's late. I... Your repost is like an old woman swatting flies. You disengage with the speed of an earthworm. In two weeks, you enter the nationals, but it is always quick, quick, quick. Maestro, quick. it's... It's 11 o'clock. We, we've been at your this Your since... wife can wait. A national championship cannot. It's not Rose. I... I have an appointment. A business appointment. At 11 o'clock at night. Yes, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. No. No, I cannot afford to be always waiting for tomorrow. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? Steve. Steve Filio, there is something you do not know. Uh, about me, I mean. Uh, what's that? Uh, sit. My Maestro, please, I have to... Please, please, please. One moment. Okay. Filio, you remember a few weeks ago I, uh, I was not well. Yeah. My doctor examined me and suggested I consult a heart specialist. A uh, heart specialist? Uh, yes, yes. I went to him, the specialist, uh, a Dr. Page, and after tests and examinations, he told me... He told me that... Uh, that even by living quietly, he could not guarantee that I would live more than a year. Uh, Eighteen months at the most. Maestro. I, I did not want to tell you this, Steve, but I must. So you will understand if I seem impatient with you. Time... Time suddenly has become a very precious thing. But, but if this is true, Maestro, you, you can't go on fencing. Uh, what do you suggest I do? Sit and wait until my time is gone? I have no intention of dying until I have taught you all I know. Until I see you win the national title. Until Steve Decker, a Tampolo champion, qualifies for the Olympic team. 
Not many people could understand this, Steve, but you can. I know you can, because you love fencing as I do. So, be patient with my impatience, huh? Now, pick your foil. Maestro, I, I have an appointment. So have I, but let them wait. En garde! Pam, Pam, dear, I'm home. Ho- ho- holy Pam, oh, what the... Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, darling, are you all right? Sure, sure, fine, just dandy. Come home from a week out of town and get impaled on the point of a, a sword. Oh, darling, I'm sorry, really. You, you just opened the door in the middle of my lunch. Yeah, well, if you'd just be Jerry, a little more... point that scowling face of yours this way, After all, please. I... Ju- there now. Better? Hmm. Yeah, sorry I blew up, darling, but... Well, I hate to have my own wife make shish kebab out of me. Well, somehow you wouldn't look your best wearing a mushroom. Yeah. Just just how did this toad stabber get into our family anyway? When a woman's husband runs off and leaves her for a week just so he can make a living, the woman gets bored and restless. Yeah, the tragedy of modern marriage. What's more, I need exercise, so I enrolled in a fencing school. Well, couldn't you be happy with knee bends and push-ups? The best fencing school in the city. Run by the oldest, sweetest, wildest-eyed, most temperamental Italian champion you've ever seen. Oh. The great Pietro Tampolo. Pietro who? Tampolo. Watch this lunge. He locked... Pam, careful, the lamp! Oh, oh dear... Maestro Tampolo would hate me for that. Sit down, Stephen. Sit down. It is good seeing you again. I bet. Well, I'm here now. What do you want? Some funds I was expecting from another source did not materialize, Stephen. So I must ask you to pay something on the loan I extended to you. How much do you want? Half. Two thousand? Two. Oh, no, Stephen. Four. What? Four thousand. What are you talking about? Four thousand was all you gave me. Two. But what with the accumulated interest and uh, other factors, the price is eight thousand. And I want half. Four. Now. But I don't have $4,000. Then I would suggest that you get it. I, I, I can't get it. Two, maybe. Yes, but... Sorry, Stephen. When I say four, I mean four. And uh, if you cannot get it for me, then I'm afraid I must take your collateral and raise the money elsewhere. You, you can't sell those trophies. <laughs> those trophies... Would you like to see them once again, Stephen? Oh, listen, Duchess, the... I keep them here, in this cabinet. Oh, out of sight, naturally. Look at them. Only Tampolo would have such trophies. Antique goblets set with priceless gems. He won them years ago. And I won them just the way he did. If the maestro only knew how lightly you have treated them. You know why I did it. I was desperate. Rose was sick. We and... all have our misfortunes, Stephen. But we cannot expect others to pay for them. Did you have a drink? Th- those trophies aren't worth $8,000. But your reputation as a fencer, that is worth it, no? What do you mean? The stringent rule that governs all American amateur athletics... Any participant deriving commercial gain from medals or trophies is to be disqualified. Well, uh, just a minute. Too bad. With the national tournaments a mere two weeks away. I, I can't raise 4000 I tell you. And Tampolo? Listen, Duchess, Tampolo is sick. Oh? He hasn't very long to live. I am sorry. The, the one thing he's living for is to see a Tampolo man win the national title, to see a protege of his qualify for the Olympic team. And you, Stephen? You are favored to win, no? I, I suppose so, yes. Ah, oh, shame. An American Olympic champion degraded by scandal. Fuel for anti-American propaganda. Can't I make you understand? I don't have $4,000. Tampolo is worth many times that much. And he would do anything to protect his reputation and yours. I can't ask him for money. No? Then I shall. I... I kill you first. <laughs> Drink? Here, 
Drink from a goblet set with jewels. A gift to Pietro Tampolo from Count Freyheaven Lodge. Oh, miserable old... Four thousand dollars, Stephen. You stay away from Tampolo, or I'll kill you. Plus the price of repairing that goblet. Steve, you, you haven't touched your breakfast. What? Your breakfast. Oh, I'm not hungry, Rose. I, um, I didn't hear you get home last night. What time was it? Oh, I don't know. It's after two. Oh? Were you working with Tampolo all that time? Yeah, yeah. Why? Oh, I just asked. You don't believe me? No, Steve. I called Tampolo. Is it one? I didn't get an answer. Well... And you were pacing the living room at four this morning. You didn't go to bed at all last night. Something's wrong, Steve. Yeah. What? Rose, how much money do we have in bonds now? Twenty-three hundred. Why? I need it. What for? Look, Rose, it's a long story. Longer than it took us to save twenty-three hundred dollars? What do you want it for, Steve? Okay, I'll tell you. A year ago last winter when you were sick and I was out of a job, mm -hmm. I uh, borrowed some money. I told you I'd put Tampolo's trophies in the safe deposit vault at the bank. That wasn't true. I, I used them to get the money. Go on. I got it. 4000 from an old woman named Maria Kubek. She calls herself a duchess. She knew Tampolo in Europe years ago before the First War. I met her at Tampolo's and... And to make a long story short, she wants some money. 4000 but if she wants 4000 now, how will 2300 help? I figure if I go to her with that much cash, she might listen to reason. I'm sorry, Steve. But you can't have those bonds. Rose. I, I... mean it. If you take the last cent we have in the world and give it to this, this duchess woman, we're through. But the trophies. Let her keep the stupid trophies. Listen to me, Steve. For five years, you've let the obsession of an egocentric old man run our lives. Just because he took you in and fed you and put a few clothes on your back when you were a kid. Well, don't you think I owe him something for that? Don't you think you owe something to yourself and to me? Good Lord, Steve, you're a man now. You're not a kid anymore. You're getting too old for games. Who cares if you win a thousand national fencing titles? Oh, Rose, please. I know how you feel. I don't blame you, but fencing is Tampolo's life. Then let him have it. Rose, honey, listen to me. Last night, Tampolo told me something. He, he's sick, Rose. It's his heart. His doctor gives him a year, 18 months at the most. That's the best news I've heard in five years. Oh, you don't mean that. I do. Can't you understand this title? I want to give it to him. I have to give it to him. All right, Steve. Go ahead. Give the Duchess our money and, and Tampolo his, his title. But when you're through, don't you bother to come home. I won't be here. <laughs> Guard, now lunch. Ah, the left foot must be stationary, Mrs. North. Can't help it. It sneaks up on me. <laughs> How's she doing, Mr. Tampolo? Ah, Mr. North. Hello, Jerry. About done with your lesson, dear? Almost. An apt pupil of the foil, your wife. Uh, you uh, do any fencing, Mr. North? No, no. My, my sport is crossword puzzle. <laughs> yeah, but fencing is much more than a sport, my friend. That's it, Mr. Tampolo. Talk him into it. Fencing, fencing is a science, an art. It demands... The grace and speed born of the dance. The strength born of battle. The courage born of the death struggle. <laughs> Sounds pretty grim. I think it's romantic. Ah, yes, romantic. Grim, it is both. The duel has been outlawed, but death is still the third man on this trip. Oh, golly, I'd better practice my lunge. Yes, uh, let us try again, Mrs. North. All right, I... Well, for Pam! What? <laughs> Look who's here. Bill Wigand. Oh, Pam, Jerry, say, what are I you doing know. here? I've taken up fencing to reduce. Yeah, and if she doesn't stop practicing at home, I'm going to wind up lighter by one head. <laughs> what brings you here, Bill? I'm looking for Mr. Tampolo. I am Tampolo. Maestro, this is Lieutenant Wigand of Homicide. How do you do, Tampolo? A pleasure. But uh, Homicide? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to come down to headquarters with me, Mr. Tampolo. Oh. I'd like to ask you some questions. Questions about what? Now, you're acquainted with a Maria Kubek. A woman who called herself the Duchess. Uh, yes. Well, what about her? She's dead. She's been murdered. Jerry. Hmm? How long has Bill had the maestro in there? Oh, about a half hour. 
I don't get it. Why did Bill want us to come down here anyway? We, we've never heard of this duchess. I know. I don't understand it, but... Oh, wait. Here's Bill. Pam, Jerry, come on in. Okay. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. Sit down. Okay, thanks. Where's Mr. Tom Polo? I had one of the men take him home. You know, he's a lot sicker than he admits, and this hit him pretty hard. Well, how come? Was the Duchess a friend of his? No, not particularly. He says he knew her only slightly. Who was she anyway, Bill? <laughs> sort of a cosmopolitan extortionist, blackmailer, and all-round con woman. Old, but not mellow. Well, then why should Mr. Tom Polo be so upset? You know Steve Decker. Decker? Uh-uh. Well, I do. I- I've met him at Tampola's style. He's Tampola's protege. Yeah? He's one of the best, if not the best, fencer in the country. I know. Tampolo told me all about him. He practically raised Decker. He took him in after Decker's parents were killed in an accident when Decker was only 14 or 15. Well, what does Steve Decker have to do with this? Well, as far as we know, he was the last person to see the Duchess alive. He also may have been the first one to see her dead. You think he... According to the elevator boy in the Duchess' apartment house... Decker called on the old woman last night at about 12.30. And he was back this morning just before noon. And the Duchess died sometime between 12 and 2 this afternoon. Hmm. We found Decker's fingerprints all over the apartment. And this, lying on the rug. Hmm. What is it? It looks like a ruby. It is. I didn't know they came that small. What's it from? Well, it could be from a ring, but I doubt it. We checked every piece of jewelry the Duchess owned. No luck. Well, uh, think it came from something? Someone uh, else did might Steve have... Decker wear much jewelry, Pam? No, he wasn't the type. Well, no watches or stick pins or cufflinks, that sort of thing? Not that I particularly noticed. Well, look, Bill, if you think that ruby belongs to Decker, why don't you ask him about it? I'd like to, but I can't. Can't? Why? He's disappeared. Oh, brother, am I hungry. Mm, So am I. Why don't you get the waiter in order? Hmm? I've been trying to, but every time I wave at him, he waves back. Very friendly place. Mm. Hey, Pam, dear, didn't anyone ever tell you that it's impolite to read at the table? Mm. Mm -hmm. What the Uh, devil is the magazine you're so interested in? The Fencing League Bulletin. It Mm. it was in the mailbox when I left for Tampola's this afternoon, and I put it in my purse. Uh, Well, read it later, will you? All right. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. But, but look at this, a picture of Steve Decker. Isn't he handsome? Yeah. He's favored to win the national title. Here's a long story about him. Hmm. Well, let's see. I'll try my luck at getting the waiter. Okay. Pam. What? Hey, did you read this story about Decker? Well, not all of it. Why? Well, did you see this? Listen. Decker has won every trophy donated to the league by Pietro Tampolo, his instructor. Well, everyone knows that. Yeah, but listen. Included among the trophies is the famous Von Lasser Cup donated by the Austrian nobleman Count Freeherr von Lasser and originally won by Tampolo in Vienna in 1912. Mm -hmm. The cup inset with small rubies. Rubies? Rubies. Oh, Jerry, do you suppose the ruby bill found them? I don't know. Well, what would Tampolo's trophies have been doing in the Duchess' apartment? I don't know that either. Well, Bill ought to see this. Yeah, he... He was on his way to talk to Mrs. Decker when we left him, so he won't be back in his office yet. Look, we'll wait until... Uh, No, we we won't. We'll go to Mrs. Decker's, too. But, Pam, look. Hey, the waiter's coming. Good. We'll wave to him from the door. Mrs. Decker? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Wigan. Oh, oh yes, the officer I spoke to on the telephone. Come in, please. Thank you. There are a few questions I want to ask you, Mrs. Decker. I'll tell you anything I can, Lieutenant. You told me on the phone you don't know where your husband is. And I still don't. Well, have you any idea where he might be? No. Have you asked Pietro Tompolo? Yes. Well, if he doesn't know, no one does. Tompolo owns Steve, every inch of him. If it weren't for Tompolo... Steve wouldn't be in this mess. Oh, why not? You wouldn't understand. I I don't know that I understand it. This insane fanaticism of Tompolo's for fencing and and the way he's played on Steve's feeling of obligation to him to turn him into a a ridiculous puppet. Uh, Mrs. Decker, have you ever seen this before? where, Where did you get that? It was on the floor of the living room in Maria Kubek's apartment. And the trophies? Trophies? The Tompolo trophy. Steve had won. Well, there was nothing like that in the apartment. Then Steve did kill her. Tompolo could even get him to kill. What do you mean? Oh, the 
Duchess was blackmailing Steve. She loaned him money on the trophies, and then she threatened to have him disqualified for the national title tournament. She demanded $4,000 immediately. And he didn't have it? No, only $2,300. That was all we had in the world, but he took it, hoping she'd listen to reason. I... May I answer it? Well, certainly. Go ahead. Hello? Rose? Oh, it's... It's you. Hello. You're not alone? No. The police? Yes. Listen, Rose. I'm going to Tampolo's. Meet me there, but be careful you're not followed. All right. As soon as possible. That was your husband. Yes. Where is he? With the maestro. Where else? Tampolo? Yes. You want to come? No. Steve shouldn't have called me. He knows how I feel. I told him this morning. I never want to see him again. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Decker. Jerry, there he is. Hey, Bill. Oh, Pam and Jerry. Bill, we've got something to tell you. Look, we'll, uh, we'll get in my car, and you can tell me on the way to Tampolo's. Tampolo's? What, what are we going there for? To get Steve Decker. When I, when I walked in, the Duchess was lying on the floor, dead. And the trophies were gone. Oh, Steve, Theo. I, I didn't kill her, Pietro, I swear. Then who, Steve, who? I, I don't know. Rose? Rose? Uh, oh, that's ridiculous. Is it, Filio? Is it ridiculous to think she may have been afraid the Duchess would accept the $2,300 you were going to offer? Why would she take the trophies? They have a certain monetary value. Oh, no, but... To think that Rose... Or, or she may have taken them knowing that if they were left behind, you and I would be incriminated. She could not foresee that the police had other ways of knowing that we were acquainted with the Duchess. Filio, you must give yourself up. And implicate Rose? But if she killed... She didn't! You do not know that, nor do I, or the police. No, but... And to run and hide as you are doing is, in the eyes of the police, an admission of guilt. Now, please, Steve, Filio, all that we have worked for. Dreamed of from the day you came to me as a mere boy. All the hours, the days, the years. Oh, in the name of heaven, can't you forget fencing even now? No. Well, you might as well forget it, Pietro, because I'm through. Steve! I'm not going to compete for the national title. But no one knows that you use the trophies to get money, and no one need know it can be our secret. It has nothing to do with it. I hate fencing. I loathe no, it. No, Filio, no. You must not say such a thing. I've catered to your insanity on this subject long enough, Pietro. Too long. Steve, Steve! Who's that? Go into the other room. Down below. Open up. They're coming. Lieutenant Wigand. Mr. and Mrs. North. Where's Steve Decker, Tampolo? Steve? But but what makes you think he's here? We know he is, Tampolo. His wife told me. And she told him about the Duchess having the trophies. Where's Decker, Tampolo? Right here, Lieutenant. <gasps> Steve! Look out, Bill. He's got a gun. And I know how to use it, Mrs. North. Now, don't be a fool, Decker. Put that down. And I'm ready to use it, Lieutenant. I'm leaving here, and anyone who tries to stop me is going to get hurt. No, Steve, please. Put the gun away. You're just making things tougher for yourself, Decker. Lieutenant, make him give up that gun. I'm afraid he's dealing, Tumpelow. Listen to the Lieutenant Maestro. Get away from that door. Lieutenant, he did not kill the Duchess. It was Rose. Uh, Rose? His wife? That's a lie! Please, Steve, it is not too late. The money you got for the trophies, we will ask the League for a hearing. Forget and... it, Maestro. You can't save anything out of this. Now get away from that door! No, Filio, you are not a killer. You will not use that gun. I will. You get away from that door, or I'll shoot. Do as he says, Tumpelow. My life is over. I have no fear of that gun. Skip the hero act, Tumpelow. Give me the gun, Steve. You stay away from me, Pietro. I swear, I, I shoot. You have your choice, Steve. Shoot or hand me the gun. I, I don't want to hurt you, Pietro, but I will if you don't... Shoot or hand me the gun. Forget it, Tumpelow. Don't press your luck. Watch it, Tumpelow. Please, maestro. You are not a killer, filio. <laughs> Brothers. Come on, Decker. No, no, Lieutenant, not Steve. You want me? Uh, you? Yes. I followed Steve to his meeting with the Duchess last night. I heard their conversation. 
Today I returned to her apartment. She was willing to destroy Steve's reputation and my dream. I destroyed her. You killed her? Yes. I thought I might forestall this moment, but... Well, a doctor's verdict or a jury's verdict, does it matter? Maestro, I... I don't... Steve. Steve, keep the blade low. More speed when you disengage and... Uh, Lieutenant... Okay, Tompolo, let's go. Now, what did I tell you? Isn't it a lot of fun, <laughs> Doc? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. Great. <laughs> well, shall we give it another whirl? Oh, why not? Here we go. Okay. On guard. On guard. <laughs> Of course, I wouldn't say this demands the grace and speed born of the dance. <laughs> or the strength born of battle and the courage born of the death struggle. But gollies, I don't know why we didn't buy a ping pong table long ago. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. That's Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Richard Dunning and Barbara Britton, as originally broadcast March 30th, 1954. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, it's a rip-roaring radio western of Roy Rogers, so don't miss it. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time. <laughs>